What up, people? How's it going? This is Bharati. Welcome back to yet another video with the Code Monk channel. Exciting day to day for me. Flutter's 1.17 just got released. It actually got released a couple of days ago, and I had enough time to play with it. And I'm actually here to provide you guys with some super cool updates with Flutter 1.17 and Dart 2.8 as well. Both of these stable releases have been the first release for the year of 2020. So I had a lot of things planned out for the Flutter's release for this year. So I was looking forward to a lot of things. So are all of that actually satisfied? So that's what we're going to be looking forward to in this video. Let's get this video straight away started. All right. So first things first. What is the first update from Flutter's 1.17? So one thing that you can look forward to from this year is that there is going to be a roughly a quarter release, which is the one good thing with respect to Flutter's release cadence is that it's always it's, it's actually kind of messed up. It was not actually properly documented. They would come up with a release whenever they wanted to, and that was actually the problem with the. Flutter 1.12 as well. So even after that, they have made a lot of fixes to that, and they come up with a proper release cadence, and they made it public. So that means that you can expect a proper stable release every three months. So as a developer who is actually contributing to a, a say the community project like Flutter, you could actually uh, look forward to your PR going in, which is actually a great, great thing to look forward to. The second update is that with the Flutter's 1.17, in the five months time that they had since the previous release, they have fixed close to 6,300 issues, which is whooping big number. So that means that they have provided so much of quality content or so much of quality uh, PRs inside this Flutter's 1.17. So there's going to be a lot of lot of performance improvements that you can look forward to in Flutter 1.17. Anyway, apart from these two updates, there's going to be a lot of cool widgets that are actually released as part of 1.17, performance improvements that are done as part of this release, as well as a lot of newer things that you can look forward to from starting from this release. So I'm going to be talking about all of that as well. And the second part of this video, it's going to be about the Dart 2.8 release, and there have been a minor release for that. It's been a silent release, so we're going to be discussing about what's new in that. And also towards the end of this video, I'm going to be discussing with you guys what is not there in this release. So that's also something that you have to know. Right, so I've talked about in in extensively that there has to be some cooler stuff with respect to the Flutter web and Flutter desktop. Are all of that actually satisfied in this release? Let's find out straight away. Awesome. Let's just jump straight away into the first major release that has been done in Flutter 1.1. So I'm going to be talking about the first performance improvement update that they have done as part of this release. So you can look forward to uh, increased performance in terms of your size of the application as well as the speed of the application. So they are claiming to be around 20 to 37 percent improvement uh, in the total release or the total application that's going to be run in your mobile phone or in in your any of your phones. So that's primarily because they have done a lot of bug fixes in terms of Flutter. Performance and memory issues, and that is actually showing in their performance as well. So you can now look forward to a much smaller size APK, which we discuss did discuss about in my one of my important videos previously. And also the second one being that it's going to be much more faster. So you have got a much more faster and smoother application uh, experience, which is very very important. So I did try that out. So I did run my Flutter upgrade, and I, I did go and and try out a size of the application. I built it on uh, out an application. I could see that the previous application. Which was actually part of the Flutter's 1.17, uh, 1.16 that we did previously I had a size of around 23.1 MB. So, and also when I built this using my re uh, latest release, which is 1.17, I found that it was actually around just 14 MB, which is actually a 7 MB reduction. Amazing work that they have done, and I'm going to be definitely appreciating the work they have put into this uh, performance and as well as memory improvement. All right, so that's for the Android uh, section of the APK. Now, going to the iOS section, there's also going to be a major, major. Improvement in how you see your iOS application performing with your Flutter code. That's primarily because they are actually now hooking directly into the Metal API, which is actually an iOS API that is uh, that's a layer for the iOS 10 and above uh, applications. So that if you have an iOS 10 and above phone, you can see that the, the 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 application is now much more smoother in your iOS. So the primary reason for that being that there is actually a layer of uh, OpenGL, which is nothing but something like a, a graphics library that is present. And there is a very direct layer be below that, which is the Metal API layer, which is something like it opens up to all the uh, cooler graphics-related applications, graphics-related APIs, and that's what Flutter is now directly hooking into. Instead of converting every application into an OpenGL application and then directly rendering it on the mobile phone, now they are using the layer above that 
and directly hooking into the uh, metals api layer so that's going to be giving you guys a much more faster and uh, performance upgrade for ios as well so they're claiming it to be 50 percent which were which i couldn't try it on, on a real mobile phone because i don't have the permission to actually build an ios application so anyway i'm uh, definitely uh, thinking that that is going to be a definite 50 percent improvement because they're touching the metal api layer Anyway, so those are the two major upgrades when it comes to the performance and memory, which is amazing to be starting with because there's actually always going to be a performance question that's going to come up with any cross-platform tools. Now, the coolest stuff is waiting for us. I did try about some close to two newer widgets that are part of the Flutter 1.17 release and the first one being the navigation rail widget. As you can see that now I'm trying to do something very simple. Now what is navigation with navigation rail widget is going to do is that it's actually going to be replacing the bottom navigation bar. Why is it that so? Because if you remember the bottom navigation bar is actually part of the scaffold itself which is going to be a scaffold parameter itself. But what they're trying to do is that they're going to now link both your application, your mobile application as well as your web application into, into a much more easier UI transitions using the navigation right so all you have to do is just import this widget into your uh, material dot dot file and it's actually a part of the material dot dot file so just import this into your application and use it in any form that you want to so i did try out a very sample simple uh, application using the navigation rail and it did work really really good and it's also giving you guys a much more cleaner look to your application also making sure that it's really really importantly uh, seen much better in terms of it's going to give you guys a stable look for both your android ios as well as a web application so that's actually a very good update with respect to your widget all right the second widget that i tried out was the use of the date picker so even though date picker has been there for a long time the recent changes for the 1.17 has been to look and revamp the entire date picker uh, 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 widget so what the the recent api it is known to look is that it's going to give it a much more newer material design for the entire application even specifically the date picker because the date picker has, is one of the oldest materially designed ui component from google so what they've done is they, they've revamped all these older designs and they've come up with something newer in terms of uh, in, in terms of just an android application so that's actually also a present as part of the flutter uh, date picker so I, so I tried that as, out as well and you can see that it's much more cleaner it's much more easier to navigate and it's also following their recent 2018 material design uh, material design format so all these things are actually very very cool and it's also going to be adding much more ui and uh, ui heavy uh, applications so it's important that they did release it in flutter 1.17 all right additionally now i'm done with the actual application the widgets that are actually present as part of the flutters now the second the other the other things that I also tried out, if you guys remember from my previous 1.12 video, did you see that? So yes, that's now actually as that part of the Flutter's 1.17 stable release as well. That's it. So Google font, which was in beta in 1.12, is now officially inside the Flutter's 1.17 stable release. So all you have to do is just import the application, import the dependency into your PubSpec.yaml file, use it in your application, and have fun. Don't have to worry about any more about the GTF and OTF files, which is going to be adding so much more, and it's going to actually hook into a lot more uh, TTF files, my, and also even the uh, Google fonts, which is going to make your application look much more clean. All right. So now. Now that's going to be with respect to the uh, TTF and OTF files and Google fonts but now the next one is actually the newer animation package so the animation package is going to be giving you guys four important and cooler animations and I did try one out uh, out of the four which is actually the open container animation as you can see again in this uh, this sample application that I built using the open container animation package it's actually much more smoother but I thought maybe it wasn't that much smoother until uh, because of some kind of a performance issue that it was facing is it because my system is facing that issue or is it because the application is facing that issue I couldn't find that out but still I did try it out in, in, in terms of multiple iterations and I found that it is actually very very cool animation that isn't just one there are four that you can play around with with respect to your open container fair as well as your cross transition as well as the xy transition so it's actually a splendidly amazing that you have four more new animations to play around with in your flutter application all right so that was for the flutter it's actually great that they've come up with so much application and so much uh, animation and bug fixes and performance improvement in terms of flutter's 1.17 even though it isn't a very huge major release in terms of looking forward for a lot of different cooler uh, os's just concentrating only on android and ios for now and that's with flutter 
But with respect to Dart 2.8, which has been a very silent release, nothing major coming into picture. With respect to Dart 2.8 release, from now you can actually use the pub outdated command to find out what are the uh, dependencies that you are using in applications which is outdated, meaning that what are the older versions that you're using, and it'll also point you towards what are the right versions that you need to use in your Dart application, Dart slash Flutter. So in terms of that, that's actually a really cool command which has done a great job for us. It's going to be doing a lot, a lot of great job for us. But additionally, there is one important thing also that is being talked about as part of the Flutter's Darts 2.8. So Dart 2.8 is now also going to be officially supporting the null safety paradigm change which Google is attempting for because null safety has been a very big long talk for from computer grads for very long time. So it's been there in the computer since ever since computers came out. So should null, null be handled or should null not be handled? Different uh, different terms, different kind of uh, opinion from one set of people while that is going, always going to be an opposing opinion from other set of people. Well from Dart's perspective they are actually officially going to handle Null and uh, null values. Uh, they're going to make everything null safe so that you don't have the applications are not going to throw a null point error or maybe a none type error. So whatever you want to call it. So in terms of that, Dart is officially moving towards that. So what they have actually told out in the release is that they have made some changes which might be a breaking change for you. Meaning that there might be some updates that you need to do in your code base because from Dart uh, Dart 2.8, there is going to be uh, some changes where you do not have to worry about null being a problem in application so if you have a null don't worry about it the dart by itself is going to handle that from dart 2.8 so that's going to be a major release in terms of uh, the application orientation but again in terms of a dart major release there isn't anything to look forward to except for these two minor releases all right so that's it for the flutter and dart major releases and minor releases and also the cool stuff but for the ones that had did not happen which i predicted should happen in this release was that there wasn't really any update for both web as well as desktop so for now everything with respect to web which is the hummingbird project is still in uh, a beta channel which is something i wasn't looking forward to because it had to be moved to uh, stable at some point of time anyway that's one and also the desktop application is still now in master meaning that there's tons of update going in for that and you cannot expect that to move to beta for at least a couple of releases which is another six to eight months so in that that release cadence we all have to be patient enough to look forward to and create and lot make a lot of pr fixes for that if you if you can contribute that will be great great thing so that's the major things that i want to discuss with you guys in this video hope you like all all did like this video you know what to do smash that like as well as put your comments on what you thought have you played around with flutter 1.17 definitely let me know all you guys should also contribute start contributing to the Flutter's open community because that's total of 6,300 PRs that have been uh, closed out in this five months, which is a great work. And if you can just contribute as much as possible, you can actually go out and fix and make it a very good, cool community project as well. So anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure to drop a comment if what you thought about this release. Looking forward to other stable releases. Let me come and meet you guys with another roundup of all the stuff that is going to be in the next stable release. Until then, it's Bharat. Peace out. Have a super awesome day.